Now, in what's seen as a major shake-up, Ukraine's defence minister formally submitted his resignation today. Alexei Reznikov took office in 2021 and has helped Kyiv to secure billions of dollars of Western military aid since the start of the Russian invasion. Well, earlier on today, President Vladimir Zelensky named Rustem Umerov as being Reznikov's replacement. Well, let's get some more analysis. We can speak to Frank Ledwich, who is a former military intelligence officer and senior lecturer in strategy at the University of Portsmouth. Thank you very much indeed uh, for speaking to us here on France 34. Just tell us, what's your reading of the reason behind Reznikov's departure? Well, good evening, Tom. The, this move has been mooted now for quite some time. We first heard rumours in February, then again in June, and, and mo most recently in the last couple of weeks. And on each occasion, there were fairly serious, although not terribly expensive as these things go, allegations of corruption, mainly connected with procurement of food or clothing and what have you. There are also, of course, as you may recall, uh, the firing of 38, I think, recruitment officers. So there was an air of corruption around the ministry. Now, it must be said that very few, if any people, commentators, ever connected Reznikov personally with any of this. I think the point is here, he's taking the rap for it. And I think in fairness, what President Zelensky said was, look, you know, we've been fighting now for 550 days. It's time for a new set of eyes on this. And the new set of eyes are going to be, uh, are going to belong to Rustem Omerov, as, uh, as you mentioned there. Yeah, just tell us a little bit about the, uh, the new defence minister and, and why his roots are, are significant in, in his selection as the new defence minister. Yeah, very interesting. So Mr. Umarov was actually born in Uzbekistan. He's of Tatar ethnicity. Now, the history of the Tatars is an extremely, uh, it, it has a legacy of brutality and severe abuse from the Stalinist period. They're expelled, they're indigenous to Crimea, and they're expelled in the 1940s, during the war, actually, and shortly afterwards as well. Went through Central Asia. Many of them ended up in the Central Asian states. Now, in the 80s and 90s, they were allowed to return in small, smaller and then larger numbers. And his family were part of that return. What happened when the Russians occupied Crimea in 2014 is that many of these people were essentially expelled again. They do tend to be, in fact, they are almost exclusively very pro-Ukrainian for that reason. Their history of the Russians is lamentable. And during the, uh, the teens and indeed during the early part of this century, Mr. Momerov was, a, was a, a civil society activist. He was a very strong and powerful activist for Tatar rights. More recently, he has uh, gained some, uh, I think, fair to say, fame, positive uh, reviews, as it were, for his role as the state property commissioner, which, as you can imagine, uh, is, is, is one of those posts which you might think might reek of corruption. Now, his tenant, tenant, tenancy of that, that role has been very successful over the last couple of years. It hasn't been, he hasn't been personally connected with corruption. But the point is here, what he links to, and you hinted at this, his background is Crimean. And the Ukrainians, as you probably know, and as your viewers will know, see, you, see Crimea as the center of gravity of this current operation. So he's linking Crimea very, very deeply now with the Ukrainian government and specifically, of course, the Ministry of Defence, which will be responsible for, for they, they plan retaking the area. OK, so just to sort of put, put your, your, those two answers together, I mean, we've had 18 months since the start of the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, we've got uh, Reznikov out. Uh, uh, we've got this uh, new man, uh, Rustem Umarov, in. What sort of an impact do you think these developments are likely to have on the progress of the counteroffensive, which seems to have gone up a gear? I don't know if that's your reading, uh, perhaps in the last week or so. Well, yeah, I think if anybody had told us, or rather told the Ukrainians, that after three months their offence will have made a, a progress of 15 to 20 kilometres at the maximum, they'd be extremely disappointed. But look, many people predict that this was going to be slow. Uh, it's a, it, it, very much a bite and hold type of operation. It's going to be a series of operations, and, 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 and that, those predictions have turned out to be correct. It doesn't mean it's failed, it just means it's going slowly, but it is going steadily. As to it having gone up a gear over the last week or so, They've retaken or yeah, retaken a, a, a reasonably significant village. They've breached some parts of the first line of defences, and that is significant. But there's an awful long way to go. What difference will Mr. Romerov make? Well, I think in the immediate term, probably very little. 
Uh, he's got to steady the ship. His primary role will be to remove the reek of corruption from the ministry, which will be very difficult, I think. But the Ukrainian people insist that this is done. Uh, Ukraine has classically been very corrupt. Clearly, billions and billions of dollars have gone into the country in weapons and other other equipment. In, in the United States, more strategically, of course, this is a major issue, the question of oversight. And Mr. Romero will want, to, will want to address that directly. They cannot afford any more allegations, either internally or external or from the outside of corruption. That would damage their, 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 uh, the, the view of people from the outside. And of course, the EU. So he's got a big task. We won't see any immediate difference. But of course, that focus on Crimea still very closely maintained. OK, Frank Ledwidge, former military intelligence officer and senior lecturer in strategy at the University of Portsmouth. Thank you very much indeed uh, for taking the time to speak to us again here on France 24.